In 1884, W.D. Horton said that the cow is the foster mother of the human race. He said a lot of other things about cows and motherhood, but little did he realize how prophetic his statements were. He was correct. Cows supply milk for babies and most of us growing up, while also supplying energy and protein as red meat for the dinner table. Look at any developing country in the world that is thriving. They have strong food animal production with cattle and other food animals. W.D. Horde not only recognized how important the cow was, she's even more critical to all of us today. She is an integral part of protecting our environment. You see, the cow has a two-system digestive tract. It's made up by four compartments to her stomach. The first compartment, termed the rumen, is for fermentation of her food. In her rumen, she ruminates on what she consumes. She consumes large quantities of grass, small grain plants, and corn plant component forages in a very short time period. She then finds a comfortable place to either stand or lie down and regurgitates the feed she consumed to rechew. You may have heard this referred to as chewing her cud. While she is chewing her cud, she secretes copious amounts of saliva that is laden with bicarbonate buffers, which stabilizes the pH in her rumen as she swallows. At a certain range of pH, she ferments the feeds breaking down the cellulose into basic carbon and nitrogen components so that the bacteria and protozoa in her rumen can synthesize these basic building blocks into fatty acids for energy and amino acids to be used in her body maintenance as well as making new proteins. This fermentation process is completed as these fatty acids and amino acids are moved through her second compartment where foreign materials such as small stones and metal from the processing equipment is trapped. In the third compartment, surplus water is absorbed prior to the fatty acids and amino acids entering the fourth compartment, which is termed the abomasum. The abomasum is a stomach compartment just like ours and other one-stomached animals. It has hydrochloric acid that breaks down ingredients not fermented passing these on and the room and fermentation nutrients to the small intestine for further digestion and absorption. This unique design by Mother Nature allows the cow to utilize nutrients from many different products that humans or other one-stomached animals can't digest. For instance, grass. There are vast areas of the United States and the world where little can be grown but grass, sagebrush, and weeds. Only cows and other ruminants like her, such as sheep, deer, and buffalo, can utilize these plants. The cow is able to convert them into energy and protein, which can then be utilized by humans. Another example that would clutter our environment, if not for cows, is chicken feathers from poultry processing plants. Clearly, feathers are not digestible for any of us. There are only so many feather pillows that can be made. Yet chicken feathers can be steam processed into feather meal and fed to the modern cow. She will consume feather meal, converting it into a high quality amino acid containing product such as red meat and milk. Most of you are familiar with monosodium glutamate or MSG which is used as a food preservative. When MSG is made from glutamic acid, the industry struggled to find an inexpensive method for disposal of the byproducts that were left over. An entrepreneurial fellow named Bill Julian discovered that when dehydrated, it made an excellent protein source for cows about to have their calves. He discovered that after processing this waste product and feeding it to cows, cows about to calve would actually be healthier but also improved the efficiency of the rumen. This positive effect would continue after calving as long as the cow was fed. The result was cows producing more milk while maintaining optimum digestive health. As we add to the list of the accomplishment of today's cows, I have a couple more examples that best exemplifies W.D. Horde's comments. Most of you are familiar with cotton fabric being made from cotton, which is grown in many milder climates around the world. 
The process of the harvested cotton being prepared for clothing is done with a cotton gin. When cotton is ginned, the cotton seed is removed, leaving white, fluffy cotton for fabric. Cotton seed is a byproduct that may be processed for cottonseed oil, but most is fed to dairy cows. She can use the high protein, high energy, and high fiber levels contained in the seeds to produce milk. Similar results are also obtained from a number of citrus fruits and vegetables, such as orange pulp from juice processing, apple pomace from making applesauce, pineapple crushing, and even sweet corn husks. Recently, when I was in Japan, I was on a large dairy farm that fed small amounts of alfalfa and corn to the cows with a bulk of their diet made up of pulp from oranges, pineapples, and grapefruit. With all that vitamin C, there's probably little chance of these cows catching cold. Some of you are sitting here watching this show while drinking a cold one. Did you know that cows are even important to brewing beer? When the beer is extracted from the hops, malt, and barley, guess where those spent hops go? Yep, you guessed it, cows. They love the stuff. Brewer's grains are usually about 75% water. If given the chance, a cow will eat 30 to 40 pounds of this stuff every day. Traditionally, corn has been used to make ethanol in the production of fine whiskeys. Today, ethanol is also distilled for an additive to gasoline blends. The spent corn after distillation is fed to cows as a high protein, high energy source. Most of you have eaten M&Ms at one time or another. Do you ever wonder where the old outdated M&Ms go from the store shelves? Well, they are fed, wrappers and all, to dairy cows. A dairy cow will eat one or two pounds of them a day. Dairymen have found one disadvantage, though, to feeding M&Ms to their cows. It lowers the employee productivity because the employees spend their time picking the M&Ms out of the cow feed instead of doing their work. Mmm, good. <laughs> Down the Road is brought to you in part by Prince Agra, makers of Omnigen AF, advancing animal nutrition for healthy animals. And Woodruff Enterprise of Springfield, Ohio, 